Hey, John Cristani here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different, but hopefully you'll enjoy it. I'm gonna be doing a, a video on a Google Display Affiliate Diet Ad Analysis. So we're gonna be analyzing a successful ad that I actually ran in the weight loss or diet industry. This ad, and I'm gonna be breaking this down, this ad made me many thousands of dollars, and I'll explain why this ad works, and exactly the psychology of what goes into this ad in this video. So stay tuned, I'm gonna walk you through from the mindset of a successful internet and affiliate marketer, exactly what leads to an ad working on the Google Display Network. Let's get it. Hey, super excited you're here. We're gonna be going over a Google Display Network affiliate ad in the weight loss or what we call the diet ad industry, which is a very big industry. It's an industry that I've made $35,000 a day in. I will walk you through exactly the psychology of, from a marketer's perspective, how I created this ad and you know why it works. So this is the ad, okay? And as you'll see, it says, eat this, never diet again. It's a pretty simple ad. It's got this weird thing on it, and then it's got a line below, which is the Dr. Oz, the holy grail of weight loss. Okay, so now on this ad, here, let me bring it up here. I'll go over a few things. So first off, this is what's called a medium rectangle. So it is 300 by 250 pixels. So right, 300 this way, 250 this way, meaning that is the size of the actual ad itself. This is the most common unit of ad. One of the great things about this sort of ad unit, it is also one of the most clickable. It's one of the best ads in regards to direct response advertising. There are other types of ads called a banner ad, which look like this. And these are generally associated with banner blindness. There's also another type of ad called a skyscraper, which is, you know, looks usually like this. And these ads are also associated with banner blindness. They look like ads. They don't blend in to the content as much as a square ad might be. A square ad or medium rectangle is what the unit's called, oftentimes blends in with the actual content of a page. Whereas these ads, the skyscraper and the banner ad generally stick out like sore thumbs. So you don't generally want to use them. Whereas this ad right here is what we're talking about. And this is, this is just a kind of a mock-up of a general web page. So whenever I was running advertisements, I'd always run the medium rectangle because it just works better. If people don't have banner blindness, the people who are buying these ads right here are generally big brands that are wasting their money because they have no idea how to do advertising, not like us affiliates. So let's get a little bit deeper into the ad. Um, another aspect that I like about this sort of ad is that it's it's very simple. You have the top, you know, let's just put the ad like this. You have a headline, you have a image, and then you have a CTA, okay? So it's very simple. Get their attention right get their attention with the image get a little more specific interest with the headline and then bring it home with what you want people to do next with the actual line of the text and what's interesting about this is that the actual way people digest many ads is what they'll do is they will look at the image first just to get their attention so this is number one then they will read this line that's number two and then they will read the call to action, which is number three. So consumers' behavior, I mean, just human beings, they go for what's most interesting first. And generally, an image, I mean, always, an image is gonna be more interesting to folks than text. It's, it's the way our brain works. Our eyes are trained to recognize things. Videos work even better than images. So if you're doing advertising on Facebook, for instance, you want to use videos. It's just a leg up. You can only win by putting videos in your ads rather than images. You can even take the same image and you can just turn that image into a video and put little flashy effects on it, you know, make it blink or stuff. You know, obviously Facebook has a million guidelines, so they'll ban you for a lot of stuff. 
But the point is, videos always work better. Images work better. So I like to use those. Now the next thing we're seeing about this ad is we're saying, eat this, never diet again. So the first thing people see is this really weird thing. I don't even know what it is. I, I can't even tell you what this is. I'm trying to think of what this is. I have no idea what this is. The point is, it's, it's meant to confuse the user's brain. They're, tr they're trying to place it into a category. Is this a hamburger? Is this a piece of food? Is this like a weird, like in slimy sponge sea creature thing? I don't know. But the point is, it catches people's eyes because they can't place it immediately. They can't tell whether this is an ad or a thing or news or something, new discovery. It just looks weird. So what happens is that because it goes into those, really those, what I call reptilian sensors, and I talk, I talk to my students a bit in my courses about triune brain theory, which is... Uh, talking about how we have the reptilian brain, we have the emotional brain, we have the logical brain. But what's interesting about the three different brains is that the reptilian brain, which is the fight or flight instinct, overrules everything, okay? Overrules everything. And the fight or flight instinct, what that is, is we as humans, when we see something, we need to say, basically, are, am I gonna eat it? Am I gonna mate with it? Or am I gonna kill it? right? The brain, it wants to figure out, is this dangerous? Is this mateable? Is this something else? Okay. And if it's not dangerous, we want to figure it out. We don't know what this is. And when we can't place something in our brain, it brings interest to us. So even if we saw that little Google ad symbol up in the upper right, when people see this, their brain flips out. It stops thinking whether it's an advertisement or not. It's just kind of like, Boom, here's this thing and the brain starts going freaking out because it's saying, am, am, am I supposed to, is this supposed to be dangerous to me or not? So we get people's attention right there. But attention doesn't equal money. Because again, at the end of the day, as affiliate marketers, we only make money if somebody buys the product that we're selling. This is what we call kind of clickbaity, right? We're trying to interrupt people's patterns because people don't like advertising, okay? So you need to find a way to reach people. Now you may say, that's awful, John. You're getting people's attention when they don't want people's attention. That's what all advertisers do. And if, if you don't like advertising, then, I mean, why, what are you doing here? Come on. <laughs> so the next thing is, we kind of paint, foreshadow what the benefit is here. Never diet again, right? And we have that further kind of weird pattern interrupt. Eat this. Like, what? The assumption is, you looked at the image first, and then you read that and it says, eat this. And that just flips out the brain even more. You're saying, what? I don't even know what that is, right? That's what the brain's thinking. How can I know to eat it? Never diet again. So there's a curiosity angle. There. What we're looking for is interest, okay? And in sales, they call this A-I-D-A. Attention, do I have your attention? Interest, are you interested in the product I have to buy? Decision, are you ready to make a decision and then action? So the first step is attention. We have to capture their attention. This captured their attention. This and eat this captured their attention. Interest, right? This is I. Are you interested in never having to diet again? So what I'm selling here is Garcinia Cambogia, which is a weight loss product. It essentially suppresses your appetite. Now that doesn't matter as much as Dr. Oz. Dr. Oz is the most famous doctor and he's very well known for talking about weight loss in America. So that adds what's called social proof. And this also goes to another sort of part of the brain, which is, you know, I'd say the emotional part of the brain. That is the emotional part of the brain, which picks up on differences between social relationships. As humans, we are constantly kind of figuring out what is our pecking order, who's in a relationship with who, who can we say this to, can we get away with saying this to somebody, are they above us, are they below us? etc. In, in sort of the pecking order. And what we're always looking for is humans don't want to make decisions on their own. Humans want to make decisions that other people have made before them. Many of you are, you know, we have this whole like, you know, crisis pandemic thing going on. And 
You know, it's one of those chicken and egg scenarios. People will not want to go out of their house until they see other people go out of their house, right? Or a significant amount. People don't want to be the first. People don't want to stop wearing masks if other people are wearing masks. It's one of those social conditioning things. Social proof is the most powerful, it's one of the most powerful things, one of the three most powerful things in marketing. Because again, the more you can show that, hey, look, other people have made this decision before you. You can trust them, right? Trust the masses. People will always trust the mass. But this is a just a psychology. So again, Dr. Oz, we throw on that social proof. We say, hey, look, I'm not pitching you anything. Look, it's this guy. This guy already said it's good. In this ad, we're saying the holy grail of weight loss, which is a quote that uh, Dr. Oz had said about Garcinia Cambogia. So the holy grail of weight loss. So we already said they would never have to diet again. Now we're saying they are going to lose weight. So we just packed in the benefits there. Lose weight, never diet again. The number one doctor in America has said that this is all good. And we have some weird kind of, we can't exactly place what's going on or what the solution is. Now that is good enough to get the clip. So that's why this all works and that's just kind of breaking down this ad. Uh, another thing is we have the YouTube symbol here, right? We have a little video play button symbol here. And why is that? And the reason for that is, is because ultimately when they click, they're gonna watch a video. So I kind of want to prepare them to watch a video. Now what I could have done better, I could have done a little video play button right here and I could have made it so that it looked like when people are gonna click the ad, they're actually gonna watch a video about whatever thing is, is going on. And again, you could design whatever you want to prepare people for whatever the next step is. If people are gonna watch a video, you want them prepared to watch a video. If people are going to read an article, you want them prepared to read an article because not everybody's gonna to wanna to read an article. Not everybody's gonna to wanna to watch a video. People have different ways they like to consume internet content. So that's behind the ad. Now, how I, how I created this ad was actually simple. I never created it. I actually just copied it from another marketer because again, marketing and sales, it's, it's pitches. You can search up a lot of my videos even and you'll see 10 other YouTubers before me shot a video on the same topic. You could search my videos and 10 other YouTubers after me shot did the same video topic. Because in marketing, there are things that work. In psychology and in dating, everything in life, there is a playbook for what works. The way Jeff Bezos built his business, he wasn't trying something totally new. He built his business 99% by a framework that was proven and works because he went to the top tier business school. He worked as an investment banker. He went by what works. He's very by the books if you know Jeff Bezos. And what we're doing here is very by the books. You don't try to innovate in marketing. You don't try to be creative. You don't try to think outside the box because if you think outside the box, if you're creative, you're probably going to fail. Okay. Now when you get good, when you get really good, when you are a multimillionaire, you can start thinking outside the box and maybe try some things out and see if they work. I tried some things out. Most of the time they don't work. But the point being is copy what worked, keep it simple, don't try to do anything super inventive, and just stick to the basics, right? We got some benefits in here. We got some interest in here. We got some social proof. We're selling a weight loss product. So at the end of the day, this is very congruent with what we're selling. We're going straight from this into, I think it's an advertorial with a video on it or something, and then going into the sales. So that's an analysis of this ad. Let me know in the description or the comments, I mean, if uh, you enjoyed this video, if understanding the psychology of a good ad was helpful for you, make sure you like, subscribe, comment. Generally, if, if you could, just give me some feedback on whether you'd like me to do more of these types of videos where I really take you into the brain and the psychology of a marketer, of me, and go over some of these ads with you because ultimately my goal is to help you succeed. I've done videos on every free traffic topic. I've done videos on a million affiliate networks on how to do paid advertising on like most of the paid advertising networks that people have heard of and many that people haven't heard of. So I'm sort of running out of topics and I'm trying to figure out what do I do next? You know, what do I teach about next? Because I, I don't really feel comfortable just 
saying the same topics over and over again. I could talk to you about free traffic all day, but I'd just be repeating myself. So let me know what your thoughts are. Do you just want me to re-upload old videos of mine, you know, that are about free traffic, or are there new topics that you'd like to see me teach about? Because ultimately this is all for you. So thank you very much. Have a good day. Like, subscribe, comment, and talk to you soon.